Hello there ladies and gentlemen, let's have another little talk with Dermon James talking about video game history and most recent news of interest for portable consoles. So, you know what the PSB does? Yes, it's a handheld uh, Sony. The last most recent PlayStation handheld, and then what was the one before that it was the PSP? Yeah. Okay, so there's multiple versions of PSP. There's PSP 1, PSP 2, PSP 3, PSP Go. Um, PSP Go was the one that actually didn't even use the fucking CDs anymore, and it literally just had memory sticks that you plug into it. And that was like the precursor for the PS Vita, which was a touch screen on the front and back console that actually allowed you to play cartridge games and also had internal memory for playing them. And then, of course, what we're playing right here in front of us, if you actually like flick through the menus a wee bit for me, is the PS Vita TV uh, hooked up and playing. So this is what the PS Vita menu looks like, uh, just with uh, being running through a TV system instead and being played with console controllers. But uh, go down there a couple of times and show us that molecular molecule or molecular shell go don't, don't, don't open it it, it might actually crash the Vita TV if we run it so essentially what molecular shell is uh, the PS Vita got hacked about a few firmwares ago uh, allowing people to be able to backload software into the actual PS Vita um, a lot of people use it maliciously to put code that would brick the consoles and stuff but um, I tested it out tried it out to see what you could do uh, basically homebrew software is allowed to be run on well not allowed but be run but could be run on consoles at that point and then since then they've updated the firmware to stop people from being able to actually put it back onto the consoles so you pretty much had a diverging point happen at that point where you had the official firmware and the custom firmware so the official firmware continued on and if you were smart enough you went over and started using the custom firmware and that allowed you to keep using your homebrewed software homebrewed emulators homebrewed uh versions of games homebrewed whitelists which are one of the most important things for the ps vita uh specifically if you're a ps vita tv owner a, a hacked whitelist removed the restrictions on what games you could play on the ps vita tv they artificially limited some of the games so that you wouldn't be able to play some of the ps vita games on the vita tv right is that, is that not the uh, sort of crimping their own audience it was like well it's one of the reasons why the video tv failed miserably and like i picked up two of mine for i picked up the two ones that i have for like 20 quid each um right okay, yeah. they, they were selling for 90 and i saw a shop drop them at a 45 and i argued with the guy and got two of them for 20 <laughs> <laughs> you know, like like 45 i'll take two of them for that uh and he was like fine i just want rid of them they were completely they were considered worthless as consoles because they didn't really kind of provide a good experience of all the, all the games were there but they get a very limited choice of games you could play in them because they had to specifically get permissions and whitelist certain games for usage. And some games that used the touch screens just physically couldn't be played on a TV. Well, yeah. You're not going to walk up and start slapping the TV. Or, in fact, you don't want to encourage a small child to do that because they actually will go up and start slapping the TV. But they, uh, some of the games actually were limited by that unintentionally or just unnecessarily because people just didn't want to go to the bother of patching them to work with control pads, even though they could have done reasonably well. I was going to say, could you not patch them to work with a PS4? Because it has pad. one touchpad, yeah. You could have. Or you could have but used you need, two PS4s. Have the, uh, you'd have to really hack it to get the to get the wire to go into it, wouldn't you? To get the oh. USB to go into the PS4 controller. No, no, the PS4 controller actually works with it perfectly fine because you just oh, use, you, oh. you can use the PS4 controller with the Vita TV perfectly fine. It's just I choose not to because I have them both used from a PS4. You use the USB cable you would use for a PS4 into it. It just syncs those as well. Oh, okay, right, brilliant. So it works perfectly fine. I think the, you can actually there is if you lo if you hold down the power button in the middle of the PlayStation controller, I think if you go down, use touch pointer in games. You can use a touch pointer on the control pad. That's what. That's literally what that's for. Ah, it so so it can use the PS4 pad perfectly fine. So the, I've never heard about this before. The Vita TV. Why? Yeah. Well, the reason why you didn't hear about it is because after eight months they stopped production. But it seems like uh, it seems like quite a a super market, market, a very possibly. focused market, a very very cheap, easy solution for people who wanted to play their portable games on the go. And do you know who managed to get that right recently? Nintendo. The Nintendo yeah. Switch. Literally, if you take a PS Vita and a PS Vita TV and combine them together, like, I, I have a pen, I have an apple. Uh, yeah. Vita TV! <laughs> like, that's literally what we actually had. We could have had the Nintendo Switch fucking years ago. Yeah. If Sony had just went, oh, <laughs> we had this. We had, we we had, had this. sorted this. We had this. Why? <sighs> We couldn't get the two things to match. Is, is, is this not a Betamax moment? Is it? it is a proper Betamax <laughs> moment. It's a, it's a proper Sony Betamax moment. It's Sony it, Sony way win the Blu-ray war, but they feel the HD DVD war in this case. It's like, the, this is the one time that if they had actually had, the Vita TV had actually taken off in a way that they had essentially said, right, you own a PS Vita? Good. Okay, that's grand. Got a games for it? Good. Grand. So, you want to play it on the TV? Good. Grand. Okay, we're going to make sure we can get as many games as possible compatible for it. We get all the apps we possibly can compatible for it. But if you're willing to pay another 40 quid, you can then play them on either one that you want. And your save games will pass them back and forth between them. Cross play, no problem at all. And then they're like, okay. So literally I can have my PS Vita and my PS Vita TV on at the same time. 
And literally all I have to do is just go, boop, and then I can play it portably. That'd be great. And then Nintendo are going like, that's a really good idea. <laughs> We need to just go, <laughs> like, literally jump out and start building the fucking, they've literally built themselves a giant PS Vita, essentially, if you look at the Nintendo Switch, that's what it is. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They built themselves a giant PS Vita, and they're like, right, hang on, we have to make this Nintendoized, <laughs> snapped off the corners of it, and just went, right, now we've got a portable. <laughs> that's literally, it's one of the feelings I have whenever I look at the Nintendo Switch, that literally all it is, is a PS Vita that's had its fucking controller snapped off the side of it. But it, it seems like they've kicked themselves in the foot again, because we were chatting on the podcast, uh, on the Black Books podcast, mm. they they sorted mini discs out. Yep, and they sorted you like they keep coming up with these great fucking innovations, and, and then just cutting everyone out of the market. So by part like, of it is like their desire for monopolization, and also the fact that they they price themselves out of our in that holery. Like whenever the Vita, whenever the Vita TV came out, it was ninety five pounds, and it didn't okay, so and it didn't bad, it yeah. didn't come with a controller. It didn't okay, come with right. an internal memory card. It didn't come with any fucking games. Oh, no, that's why I lie. It came with three Vita games that you could download via code, but because it didn't come with internal fucking memory, it had one gig of internal memory, you couldn't fit all three fucking games onto your console at the same time. Right, okay, yeah. So you actually had to buy one to delete one, back and forth, doing that all the fucking time. So, yeah, the, essentially, their release of the Vita, Vita TV was so bad that they just floundered constantly from its moment of inception to its end. And obviously, they're the, these will be the kind of things that actually, like, 20 years from now, they'll be going like, do you remember the Virtual Boy? No, I don't remember. I remember the Virtual Boy. But do you remember the Vita TV? Yeah. <laughs> like, it'll, be, it'll be one of those devices. And one of the things I've always been wanting to do here on the channel is to play a fuck ton of Vita games. Because there's a whole bunch of these games that actually you don't see on the main consoles. And I'd love to play some retro games because there's a large catalog of the original PS1 games. up the 720p. Right, brilliant, yeah. Yeah, so like you could play Ridge Racer or Final Fantasy VIII or whatever else actually up res in quality to the point where they look. look blocky as fuck, but they're essentially running on a PlayStation emulator on a PlayStation official console with a PlayStation 3 controller, and they're probably the closest you'll get to an experience of playing an original PlayStation 1 without having to fucking dig up the discs. Even that looks blocky. Yeah, oh, even the health warning looks like it's actually pixelated. A health warning is so... Uh, it even does the music, it does the sound! It does the sound! The, oh, the P looks very elongated, doesn't it? Yeah, no, I think it actually is stretched for 16.9 because it was 443 screen. Of course, yeah, of course. <laughs> That's the best part. Yeah. And actually, uh, so, like, literally uh, playing these really old games, and do you know the worst thing is, I know this video is going to get claimed now because there's a Namco logo in it. Okay, so let's... That's on it, don't, but I actually really love this game. <laughs> but guys, thank you very much for actually watching. Uh, you've listened to another wee rant about the Vita TV and Vita history. If you guys have a memory and a knowledge and a thought that actually, like, counteracts any of the thoughts that I've had so far, do you think the Nintendo Switch is literally a Vita and a Vita TV just pineapple pen together and sold as a separate device for a ridiculous amount of money? Because that's the opinion that I've had for a really long goddamn time. And I would like to see somebody actually counteract that opinion and disagree with me in some way, shape, or form. Let's get a discourse going here because I honestly think that Nintendo saw a really good opportunity to just go like, Ha! Sony, you tried that? We'll do it better. We'll do it easier. <laughs> So yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. Um, if you enjoyed this video and you actually want to see more of it, make sure to hit the subscribe button and join and watch the channel. Um, if you don't want to do the subscribe thing, completely understand that. Not a lot of people like to do that thing. Just remember the name, Pasty Chef Skin. Every once in a while, whenever I pop into your mind, just throw my name into Google, and I'll be there. <laughs> I'm not trying to hide in any way, shape, or form. This has been James McInnesby, listening to me rant for a couple of minutes. And, as always. Um, as always, and it's always welcoming. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for watching, and if you're watching this on YouTube, oh, I fucking love that tune playing in the background too. Ridge Racer. Um, the button will be up there, and of course on the side will be over the top of the Ridge Racer sexy ass of Meko, Reiko, Riku, whatever her name is. Uh, playlist of recent videos up here in the channel. One on the far side will be the most recent video, and over the top of James's head will be a video designed for you, based on your user analytics and the things that you watch on YouTube. Make sure to check it out. It'll be, it'll be literally the one thing that you need to see on this channel, because you found this one, but I don't know if you actually found the other one. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see all you dudes in the next round. Bye.